great about today is we actually finished the substructure of the steel. Uh, we had a popping out party yesterday, and uh, it's a tradition not only here in the United States, but also uh, in Germany for our contractors uh, to put the tree up there. We didn't do the full tradition because the foreman or the project manager was supposed to get up on top and make two glasses of wine. And uh, I, I, I don't know if you like that. Down <laughs> We're still putting down um, rack material, which is the construction material for the automatic weapon. So we'll take a closer look um, instead of staying here in the ring. We call the slurry wall or the ring beam. And the slurry wall of the ring beam at the end of the day will support the dome when it's fully loaded. Right now we have the scaffolding in here to support the dome as well as um, have a, um, a working platform for us. So when we get the glass caulked and sealed, we start to pull out the scaffold. This material is what's actually going to sit on top of the steel substructure. So these nodes right here are going to be, this is the aluminum framing that will actually support the glass inside these gaskets. So this will do, for example, one section of glass. And that in turn will be another section of the glass. And they'll be butt together and then filled with sealing. So it'll be continuously a smooth surface and that'll be weather tight. Um, these were also made in Germany, uh, as well as the rest of the frame. We got the, the, the steel and glass coming from Sale in Germany. And it, was, it had to be carefully engineered with a slurry wall and ring beam. So that at the end of the day, like the Jumo in Florence, it'll support, self-support the dome. It's pretty cool. Uh, so it'll all self-support it right on the actual rim, hmm. all the way around. But we don't want to pull out the scaffold so the glass is installed so it's fully loaded. So this is the next phase, then we install the glass, and then we do the seal. So to answer your question, the glass is insulated glass, it's, it's uh, tinted glass, as well as printed glass. And the idea behind the frit, the lamination, and the insulation is to allow enough light in, ambient light during the day, but also keep out the solar gain, reduce the solar gain that will come in as far as the sun. The digital and the conservation side. Right in the middle here will be the circulation desk. And books will actually pop up through the floor where the racks are going to be will be stored. But what's unique about seeing it today is you see it actually open to get an idea of what the size is going to be. Um, and uh, one big bathtub. Because what, what it's going to be at the end of the day is all you're going to see is rack. If you came down here six months from now, six months from now rather, you'll just see a giant rack. You won't see this. But here you get a real order of magnitude on how large the space is. What we did is we constructed the slurry wall first and, uh, and then dug the hole second. The reason we did that is we had to put the, we dug around the whole shape of the ellipse first with a clamshell type machine and uh, used what we call a slurry wall construction method, which is basically, as we dig, we're pumping in this bentonite slurry material to keep the excavation from caving in on itself. So what you see is actually, it was bearing right on either the sand or the clay, whichever was the, um, the surface at the time. So this is a 30 inch concrete wall with, um, there's 26 total panels, and um, if you look at some of the pages that uh, Rachel has on Flickr, you can see some of the cages that were actually lowered into the slurry wall construction as we were pouring the concrete, after we poured the concrete, before we poured the concrete, sorry, and then we were pumping out the slurry material afterwards. Backs are used to support the slurry wall and uh, keep the water out and keep the uh, uh, external pressures out from keeping the uh, walls from caving in. And there was about, three, as I said, 320 of these, and they range from anywhere from 20 feet to 45 feet, and they stretch all the way around out on a 45 degree angle, and we have four levels of them. So they reach out into Ellis, and they reach out underneath Regenstein, so it's like a big star around the ellipse. Thank you. 
Flooring walls are not impervious to water. Concrete is not impervious. We do have a trench drain system around the perimeter that will take any residual water to sump pumps and inject it out into our big Chicago sewer system. <laughs> to do the rack. 